Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Whenever you're watching this, welcome to the contemplative service of Pine Shores Presbyterian Church. My name is Kathleen Weller, and I'm happy to be here with you to celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent. And I remembered as I was walking over to the camera that uh, our fourth candle hadn't made it yet. So here we go. Here we go. It is our custom uh, to center ourselves as we begin this worship experience, uh, to kind of leave whatever is going on behind and how difficult is that before Christmas in this very unusual year. But uh, to try to do that as best we can. And so we'll do that by um, listening to a piece of beautiful music and uh, letting the music help to uh, separate us from the stuff and center us inside of ourselves into that secret place where God resides with us. Let us prepare for our worship.
legs to Wayne Fisher. Our reading for today continues in the first chapter of the Gospel of John. Let's listen to God's word for us. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. We have beheld Christ's glory, the glory of the only begotten one of God. John bore witness to this one when he said, this is he of whom I said, the one who comes after me ranks before me. For he was before me and from this one fullness, we have received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. However, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the begotten one who is in the bosom of the father, the Christ, has made God known to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I know that when I talk to you, I keep returning to my kind of on again, off again struggle with the theology that surrounds the second person of the Trinity, Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, the begotten one. And I keep bringing it up because I don't think struggle um, is offensive to God. It's offensive to some of my friends, but I don't think it's offensive to God. But in this passage before us today for the fourth Sunday of Advent, the Sunday before Christmas, my struggles disappear and my heart actually melts as I read. And from this one's fullness, we have received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, however, grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. Here, every theological argument, every hesitation, every gee, I wish, or gee, I wonder, is silenced. Here, what I feel in my heart and what I uh, live for myself and what I offer others reaches the pinnacle. This is it. This is everything I say has, has its ending here or its beginning here or its center here because I find this as truth with a capital T and from Christ's fullness from Christ's fullness we all Christ's all receive grace upon grace while the law came through Moses grace and truth comes to us through Christ you know friends it's really it's been a tough year and in many ways, too many ways, among the victims of this year have been grace and truth. They have fallen victims in both our national political scene. They've fallen victim even among some of our friends, among members even of our own families. Grace and truth took a beating in 2020. So as I read this first chapter of John, which will come up again in a few weeks, I could not have been more delighted, more pleased to receive what I am receiving, what I am esteeming as a gift this Christmas, the gift above all gifts, the gift that's not available even on Amazon. And I want you to receive it too, and I want to invite you to share it with those around you, with those from whom you might have become estranged. Because while we know somewhere deep inside that with God all things are possible, our passage from John shows us what that looks like. Shows us the path to the no longer impossible. No surprise that the path is to God. No surprise to most of us that the gift is Jesus the Christ. But maybe you like me are a little surprised that the gift we unwrap looks nothing like a baby in a manger, but it is grace and truth. Grace and truth for you. Grace and truth for me. Grace and truth for everyone. I cannot think of a single year that I have felt more profoundly this gift of Christmas or a year where it was more needed. So Merry Christmas to you, people of grace and truth. Merry Christmas, people of grace and truth. Share it. Share the news, share the joy. Amen, amen. I just need to breathe.
Brothers and sisters, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Scripture tells us we will gather from north and south and east and west and sit at table together. This is the Lord's table and not our own. All who love the Lord are welcome to come and to taste and to see that the Lord is good. For on the night that he would be betrayed, Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks and blessing his father, he broke it. And he offered it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. And in the same way, when the meal was ended, Jesus took the cup and again, he gave praise and thanks to his father. And he offered the cup to his disciples saying, take drink. This is the cup of the new covenant in my shed blood, shed for you and for many, for you and for many that sin may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. For indeed, each time we eat the bread and drink the cup, it becomes for us a memorial meal until the time Christ shall come again. These are the gifts of God, free gifts of God for the people of God. Come, the table is set for you. The body of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen, amen. Friends, with the taste of the meal still in our mouths and the grace promised and assured for already have been given. Let's spend a few moments in silence that we might know grace and truth.
please pray with me. Great Creator, exquisite, holy, divine, we, your creatures, bless you. We've come to worship you, we desire to please you, and to praise you. Great are you, God, and greatly to be praised. On this Sunday before Christmas, we consider its past, present, and future. As we look back, we wonder with Mary what it all means. In the present, we accept and receive the gift of Jesus the Christ, the bearer of grace and truth. And anticipating Christmas's future, we ponder how we might be the carriers of such a gift, how we might see you, Holy One, in the person and work of Jesus and become more like him. May we see grace and truth in Christ. May we accept divine grace and truth as gift. May we offer grace and truth to those around us. May we remember and recall and practice grace and truth in our own lives, with our families near and far, grace and truth. In our community life, grace and truth. In what we say and do as citizens, grace and truth. In how we interact with neighbors and strangers, grace and truth. And in what we hope for all people everywhere, grace and truth. But in this moment, by and because and through your great love and mercy, may we receive the gift of Christmas with renewed awareness, and may it fill us with hope and the promise of peace. For we make our prayer in the name of the Blessed Three, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. And we add our prayer, even as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So I'd like to take this opportunity to wish you a Merry Christmas and to thank you for journeying with me on the internet, in front of your computer, with your phone in your hand for these many months that we have not been able to gather uh, in person. I don't know what the future will hold, but I remain convinced that sacred space is a necessary space. So I'm so grateful to have you join me here. And now, may you be filled with the expectation of Mary and know the preparation of John. May you know and receive and embody the humility of a stable and the glory of a heavenly host, the curiosity of shepherds, the joy of angels. And may the God you seek, the God you seek, be revealed to you in Christ the Anointed One, so that baptized by the Holy Spirit, you may know joy upon joy and peace upon peace. God bless you. Thanks for being with me. Amen. <laughs>